Welcome everyone to the Soplo Real Estate Show and our segment today is Ask Athena and Julie Anything. Well today our topic is going to be very very apropos for to the tax season. We're going to dive into what juicy secrets lurk in those tax returns and what gets the underwriter buzzing. So basically what are underwriters looking for on my tax returns in order to fund and give me the loan to purchase my dream home. My name is Athena Chalikas Barocas. I'm a top producer and award winning realtor here in Southern South Florida with Coldwell Banker. Julie Dinda of Brady's Financial Group is co hosting. Hey, Julie, how are you? Hi, how are you? I have a little bit of a hoarse voice, but this is such important information. I have to push through it for you guys. <laughs> Well, we're glad we're having you here. And unfortunately, you'll be doing most of the talking because today is all about mortgages. And we're going to talk about how W-2 employees. Today, it's about W-2 employees. Next week, if you are self-employed, you have to tune in because we will be talking about self-employed and how taxes are impacting how a loan is processed. So you don't want to miss that one. So let's get to it today, Julie. Let's talk about what underwriters are really looking for in our tax returns and why it's so important to make sure that we are filing on time and being part of the process in the most diligent way possible. So why are, why are tax returns so important to a lender? So I will say if, if you've ever applied for a mortgage, you probably know that there's a tremendous amount of documentation that goes into this process. One of the most common questions people ask is whether they need to provide returns as part of their mortgage application. While this isn't always the case, there's a good chance that you'll be asked to provide those tax returns when applying. Um, so what I, so what, so what exactly do I and underwriters uh, look for on tax returns? How, you know, I, I guess that's what we're going to kind of dive into. How many years of tax returns are needed for the mortgage? Um, we'll take a close look at how your tax returns are dealt with during that mortgage process. Yeah, absolutely. And it's tax season. This is what this is one of the two times a year that if you're applying for a mortgage and you're going through the process, tax returns become very, very important. Julie and I were just talking about this the other day and um, how complicated it can become and how you know frustrating it can become for our mutual clients. So we really wanted to take this time and talk about why it's so important and more importantly is you know what do underwriters look for on a tax return so julie let's start with talking about you know the importance of the tax return in this time of the year why is it that our clients should be filing as soon as possible to ensure that their 2023 tax documents are provided to the lender if they are in the process of either um, when they're in the process of buying a home right now yeah, it's no secret when you apply for a mortgage that lenders want to know that you can repay the loan to assess your final situ financial situation and also determine whether or not they should extend credit. Um, most lenders will require one or two years of tax returns um, from potential borrowers. Now, keep in mind that there could be additional questions that, that, that you need to ask answer as well and that the, the lender itself may ask for additional information to actually support that documentation that you give us. Yeah, and you know, you said something that was like spot on. You know, when you're applying for a loan, you're really giving the lender all the information possible so they can determine whether or not you, they, that you as a buyer can repay your loan over the number of months that you have committed to. Most likely it's 360 months, a 30 year loan. That's the most popular. Um, that's a long time partnership that the lender is taking on. So when they look at your tax returns, they're not just looking at your W-2 income. They're looking whether or not you have investment income, alimony. Um, Julie, help me out. Some other these other things, um, dividends coming in, bonuses. They're looking exactly. at all different types of income. 
Yeah, and lenders ask for those tax returns, except, you know, essentially when one assess your ability to repay the loan. So when an individual takes out a mortgage for hundreds and thousands of dollars, there needs to be some insurance to us that the repayment is possible. And that's where tax returns actually come into play. Uh, by looking at W-2s and other income, income statements actually associated with filing those taxes, we're able to verify earnings and get an idea of how much money the borrower is earning on an annual basis. So like on, um, when we look at W-2s, we wanna see, do you get bonuses? Do you, um, you know, how long have you gotten those bonuses? If you've gotten a bonus for one month, that doesn't really help, you know, you know, we don't, we don't know. Now let's say you've been working for a company for 25 years, you get an, a bonus every single year and you can show that on your W-2s. That's something that I can use. And that's something that we can, we can work with on that end. Um, right. you know, and not, yeah, go ahead. I was like, I can talk about that. No. Oh, okay. I know, I know you can. That's what I love about you is, you know, the wealth of information you have and your willingness to share. So you are fabulous on that. Um, I just wanted to bring back to the point that, you know, some income, even though, you know, one of our, our clients may have that income, they've been waiting for that bonus once in, you know, five years, is that that bonus may not be the ideal income an underwriter is looking for, as you mentioned, that one-time bonus. So we, you know, yeah, as and not having those, yeah, not having those those verifiable tax returns actually can raise questions regarding the liability and the responsibility. So if you're facing that issue while applying for, you know, financial options like mortgage or refinance loads, then getting current on those filings is actually essential. Um, you know, those asking you can get a mortgage if you owe taxes. You know, sometimes that process may be difficult. Lenders could use that as an additional debt, making that application process more challenging. Right, right. And we've spoken about pre-approvals and how important it is to make sure that you meet with your lender ahead of time to, you know, to create a very favorable application. So if you're interested in more information on pre-approvals, we have that in our previous show. Um, but remember we were sharing stories the other day and we were always like, oh, if they only listen to us, Julie, if they only listen to us. And um, you had that great example. And I think it would be a great time to show it today. So share with our audience what transpired on that transaction. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think, you know, every the reason I tell people that every, um, you know, transaction is its own unique transaction. Timing is very, very important. I had someone that put an offer in on a house at the end of December that ended up closing fairly quick, quickly in January. They had everything that you can think of. They gave me everything in advance. They had everything that was like a perfect client. You know, they had everything done. Well, when the underwriter on, you know, January, you know, 13th before their closing took a final look they actually came back to me where I thought we were going to get it clear to close and we had approved with conditions, which means that there's something that the underwriter is looking for. And so what ended up coming back on that condition was it was January, you know, 15th and they wanted 2023's w 2 because they got it January 1st. And you know, as a lender, we want the most current and the most accurate. So it was a little frustrating for the buyers because they had done everything we asked for them to do. And they were amazing. One of my favorite clients ever. But now, right, you know, two days before we're supposed to close, they got to scramble and they got to reach out to their, you know, the HR department and make sure that that was sent to them and, and all of that. But Sometimes you just have to be prepared. If they had closed in November, we would have never asked for that. You know, so it's kind of, it's all about timing and it's all about, you know, the, your own, you know, specific situation. You can't get absolutely, frustrated. Absolutely, kind of absolutely. Yeah, you can't get frustrated, you know, because sometimes it's always going to change. A loan is always going to be fluid. It's always moving until you get my three favorite words clear to close every you got to be prepared for anything 
It's true. It is a very fluid process. Do you remember the time we were working with the one client and um, they had their two years of taxes? And then we went into the next tax season and the lender underwriter's like, okay, you should have your taxes ready now. You should be filed. Let's take a look. Well, what happened, which we didn't know about, is, you know, their personal life changed. So, you know, they were happily married three years ago, not happily married anymore. Their taxes for the current year showed alimony support. It changed everything. It was a very fluid process. And, um, you know, the underwriter was right there on top of it, doing their job to make sure that the income they had was enough income in order to support the partnership of a loan. That was a wild Correct. ride too. Do you remember that one? Never a dull moment with us, Adina. No, never a dull moment. So the best thing I think that the best takeaway from this conversation, Julie, is one, be prepared to be proactive. Three, listen to your lender and your realtor when it comes to providing the right documentation. Because at the end of the day, we want you to get pre-approved. We want you to fund and we want you to buy that house. And so we're here to do everything possible to make that happen. And I say all the so time, I, the most important thing that I'm here for is to make sure that you can afford it and you're not struggling and eating ramen noodles and macaroni and cheese. Like, I want you to afford the house and I don't want you to get a bigger house than what you can, you know, what is that saying? Bite off more than you can do, you know? <laughs> Right, which goes back to our pre-approval and our and the initial consultation we do Correct. with our clients. Um, today, when we're talking about taxes, you're already past all that, but it's important that you really work with your lender to make sure that you're providing the right information. So there's three things an underwriter is really looking for. They're looking for your income. Julie covered that. You know, your W two. What are your What's your income? standard verifiable consistent income so again that one-off bonus not so much um change in your your status whether or not you're paying alimony whether or not you're getting regular bonuses you know anything that's going to change your income they're going to be looking at this and they're going to be doing this over a period of time as julie mentioned Right there, January 12th, 13th, whatever your example is, Julie. What are your W-2s for last year? Oh, okay, let me go get them. It's because again, income is number one. Um, DTI, debt to income, you know, we've talked about this several times. You know, you don't want to take on extra debt, correct, Julie? Correct. Oh, I think. Yeah, correct. So we don't want to take on extra income. You want to make sure your debt to income ratio is within the range that the lender or the underwriter really wants you to maintain throughout the process until they hear those three words, Julie, which are? Clear to close. Let's go. Clear to close. <laughs> I think we have a delay. It's clear to close. So until Julie gets those three words, you know, everything is at risk. And most importantly, what they're looking for is your level of risk as a buyer. You know, they want to partner with you. They want to give you the money. Um, but the level of risk has to be within a range that is tolerable for the lender. So the W-2s, your 2023 taxes this year, get them done, get them filed, get them to your lender. It'll make your process easier, Julie, and it'll make... The clear to Correct. close come a little bit faster. <laughs> I don't know where you are. You're like in a distant right land now. at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So Julie, what other words of wisdom do you have regarding your ta the taxes, tax season for W-2 employees this year? Any other words of wisdom? Yeah, I mean, I would just say make sure that you're keeping uh, your, you know, you're staying organized, you're keeping your W-2s readily available. Another thing to keep, um, you know, if you're looking to, you know, purchase a house, another great thing for us as lenders is your last paycheck. If you can have access to that last mm. paycheck of, you know, 2023 or the last paycheck of 2024, 
it actually breaks down what your bonuses are, what your commissions are, what your, you know, your pay is. So I can actually use that to maybe give you more money or, you know, kind of work with that a little bit. So if it's possible for you to get that, or when you do get that, save that with your W-2s. If you're looking to purchase a house in 2024 or 2025, just, you know, hold on to that. Cause that's very, very, that holds a lot of information that I'm looking for as a, as a lender. Great. Thank you, Julie. So some of the takeaways are be prepared. If you have financial documents that are going to be required or may be required for your lender regarding your income, regarding your debt, save them in a file. You will need them for the next two years or two-year period of when you buy your home. Um, the next takeaway is that we are all subject to what the underwriter is looking for or what they discover or what they need clarification on. And the best way to handle this is simply to respond with the documents in a very timely manner. This is only to your benefit. Um, Julie, I wanna thank you for joining us today. I wanna thank you for being my guest um, host all the time. And I look forward to next week, we're gonna be talking about self-employed, um, self-employed and buying a home and what the underwriter is going to be looking for for those particular individuals and what types of programs that might be able to be out there so they can move forward with their home buying journey. Correct. That's so important. You definitely need to, um, you know, stop by and, and check that one out because we're in South Florida. Everybody has their own private, you know, it's like, even if they have W2 income, maybe they have a side hustle business or, or something like that. So definitely, definitely, you know, be here for that so that we can help uh, you to, you know, get the most out of that income that's coming in. Great. Thank you, Julie. Always a pleasure. Have a great day. Thank have you everyone awesome for week. tuning in. <laughs> What's that? Have an awesome week. Oh, have an awesome week. Everybody.